founded at the start of the 1960s, this 10-day celebration takes over the entire town as 150 shows from 30 countries come together with audiences of 150,000 people. The Festival Mondial de Théâtre de Marionette is basically the equivalent of the Cannes Film Festival for puppetry and it takes place right here in the small French countryside town of Charleville, Mézières. And that is why it is here we find our South African puppet masters. South Africa's internationally acclaimed Handspring Puppet Company's production was titled Aroboros, a Greek word which describes the cyclic nature of the universe. It was directed by a graduate of the puppet school here in charleville mezieres Jenny, it must be an honor for you to be back here in the middle of this award-winning, world-famous festival after studying here for so many years. I studied here for three years, but of course this town uh, outside of festival time is a little bit like Grahamstown outside of our National Arts Festival. You know, it's a very quiet town, but what's wonderful is coming here during the festival, it's an explosion of the best of puppet theater from around the world. So just puppeteers come from all over to show their best work and to see each other's best work and then there's a huge general public who also kind of migrate to this place to really see what's happening in the art form uh, every second year. A Standard Bank Young Artist Award winner, Jani has directed for the Royal Shakespeare Company and invests as much in these characters as she would in Romeo and Juliet. Let's talk about your work, Robberus. I believe it's about dreaming and the cycle of life, correct? It's about being. It's about the different aspects of ourselves that relate within any given moment. Aspects of our past and our future are playing uh, in every moment of our present. So Ouroboros is all about that. It's about a man and a woman trying to meet, trying to make a relationship, but, but some parts of them are being drawn to each other while other parts are going, whoa, no, <laughs> not, not now. Um, so it's about overcoming fear and being able to commit is about resolving things from the past. And that involves aspects of ourselves that are almost in a different age, in a different stage of life. Several marionettes are required to represent the dancer and the poet characters through different eras of their lives. The Handspring Puppet Company has spent 30 years refining the technique behind these creations and they demand a lot of attention. Wow, hi Jess. Hi. So here's the rest of the gang. Yes. Now you guys travel quite a lot and I'm sure puppet maintenance is very important. Probably the most important part of the backstage job. The heads get slotted in like this. It's, it's quite important that they travel separately because it's, it's easier to keep the, the faces safe. <laughs> Sorry, it's not a very graceful process. Putting them I would back imagine somebody just shoving my head on my neck. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. That's pretty much what's happening. Get forced into life. And then that clicks in. There we mm -hmm. go. And voila, suddenly you have a face on the puppet. That is, which is amazing. All in all, much nicer. So one of the most important things is the joints. They yeah. have to make sure that, that all the right nuts and bolts are, are still in place because if, if they break, then suddenly the puppet won't be able to move naturally on the stage. Oh, okay. um, and then also very important is the elastics inside the hand. Um, in order to move the hand, the puppeteer slips a finger in there and then oh. they can essentially use their own hand and the puppet hand copies what they're doing as it were and then this is the head mechanism so this lever gets pulled and the head moves ah. up and down like that Jess, in theatre, what happens? I mean, you, you think about um, clothing for the cast. You yes. guys, and now it's clothing for the puppets. For, for the puppets. And yeah. to be honest, the cast um, wardrobe gets a very quick glance and we go, yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. As long as it's not too creased. The puppets, that's the important thing. The company was founded by fine arts graduates. So even when using simple techniques like shadow puppetry, they approach it with the same discipline as they would a work of art. The wonderful thing about shadow puppetry is that it is very simple, actually. It's core elements. You have a light, you have a sheet, you have a cardboard cutout of something. It's really a form of puppetry that actually anyone could do at home. What you see here is a very complicated form of that, very higher grade. We've got a scaffolding set up, we have multiple lights all rigged into the theatre lighting system. We've got everything from uh, cardboard cutouts to more complicated shadow puppets. See, he's got a whole lot of mechanisms that make them, the mouth open and wiggles his tail as well. We use the shadow puppet screen a lot to indicate uh, characters' thoughts, dreams, what's going on in their head, in their subconscious. So that's, that's sort of how we integrate the shadow puppetry into the show. 
There's no room for egos in this performance, as every member of the cast knows the puppets are the stars of the show. I want to know who we have here. Let's start this side. Here we have little Nukbonisa in the play and we see her in three stages of her life. She's brave, always prancing around, curious about stuff and she also moves some of the action in the play. All right, and boys, who are you responsible for? This is little Andre. He is basically a very imaginative, creative little boy and he has uh, whole scenes where he's just lost in his imagination. He's a little bit shy and he's uh, very sort of withdrawn but, but very active in his own head. Puppets obviously have abilities that human beings don't, so that must open up a whole world of opportunities. In our uh, particular play, uh, there's a moment where the little boy is undergoing some trauma. His parents are fighting in the room next door and he takes off his ears and suddenly the sound stops. And he's kind of like, no, no, I can relax. And he goes into a time of play. But the, the magic of puppetry really lies in the potential of what the puppet can do that humans can't do. But as a puppeteer, you are as visible to the audience as the puppet. Is your performance as important as the item that you're handling? Absolutely. But I think as puppeteers, it's important for us to remember that we're an extension of the puppet. The puppet isn't an extension of us. So if we're in sync, then we move seamlessly and hopefully we can begin to disappear and the real stars of the show get to shine. And actually talking about disappearing, Raj, can you pop up from under there? <laughs> when people think uh, puppetry, they think kids' entertainment, but this production is squarely aimed at adults. Yes, puppets are really fascinating in the way it's, it's a medium of communicating. So uh, you can communicate with whoever you want. Often we think that children are easier at suspending their disbelief. For adult theatre, you have to be quite specific in order for them to believe you and go along with the journey. All right, I, I have to give it a try. Let me come to Knox's the side, right? right? How do we do this, girls? We're going to stand up for you quickly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So hold the handle. I've got it. Right, so you're going to lead. Okay, now, Bonang, remember, you must keep a posture straight. Okay, like that. <gasps> this That's better. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can do a high five. <laughs> With the company currently employed in productions from the UK and Germany to the US, perhaps more of us should be considering a serious career in puppetry.